So, this is Rooster Teeth's new show that they're going to air. Their new web animation show. And is this a show that I am gonna review? Well, to be honest, I don't know. But I'll definitely try to take through the entire of season one of this show. And we'll see exactly where do does Gen Lock really lie. Hi for those who are watching, this is the Angry Anime Fan and this is a despair reviewer of the Gen Lock episode 1. The new show from Rooster Teeth. I want to say new hit show from Rooster Teeth. After getting heavy promotion, it's finally, finally here. And I'll try to tell my thoughts on it. First of all, it starts it starts with the, the main character, Julian Chase. I think his name was, or was his name Chase Julian? I know that, yeah, his name was Julian Chase. Huh. Everyone calls him by his last name. Huh. That is kind of uh, sad. He's together with his uh, girlfriend uh, uh, meeting his family, although together, although technically they're not really there. They are hologram. They are fighting a black mist of Nano. I have yet to 100% fully understand that, mind you. And uh, they are soldiers in that dark. But Miranda and Chase seems to really like and love each other, since they're together after all. But during one of these battle fails, Chase try to divert the enemy forces and his ship crash lands, apparently killing him, taking away the main character in just one go. The scene then switches to four years later, where we also see the rest of well, what has happened after that. Miranda has become a lot more... As Miranda was introduced stoically, she was also a little bit, well, a little more happy. But now she has become pretty distant and cold. Well, can we blame her? She technically lost, lost love of her life. Or did she? As the episode then introduced the fact that Miranda is supposed to show a new person around campus. This one being the very eccentric doctor, or Rufus Weller, a man with has grey hair similar to David Tennant, who is voiced by David Tennant, as well as a uh, fighting woman, Jessamine Madrani, I think is her name. I wonder if, uh, well, she looks kind of boyish, but she seems to kick ass. Either way, during one of those units, uh, the, the military of the units called the Vanguard tries to find some... Uh, survivors to take them to well a safe place but then the enemy forces come only to be repelled by super amazing new mecha robots that uh, later on they, they assemble in a meeting where they protest and wonder what are those robots for it is revealed that they are a new type of android and one of them is piloted none other than Julian Chase who appear in a hologram saying the iconic world words miss me all right, uh, this is the first episode of Gen Lock, and we're doing them in order, so to speak, like that. Even though technically, the episodes, sorry, air at the same time. So, man, you can say what you want about them. So, what were my first impressions on that? Well, when I saw the trailer, I can't admit the uh, the motion of it all was kind of off turning. But uh, the animation is not so bad as you think it is. It will actually grow on you. It is also worth noting that, yes, this is Rooster Teeth, but is, this is their first and perhaps last uh, show that actually has union actors, you know, well-known actors. Rooster Teeth is known to work alongside Funimation or maybe even their own actors. But here is the first serious actors as um, Julian Chase is voiced by none other than Michael B. Jordan. You know, I'm kind of surprised they even got Michael B. Jordan. Granted, this was before he became a little bit more famous. Granted, he was already famous as soon as he got this role. But <laughs> given the year he had in 2018, can you, can, can't you agree that he has really got up in fame? And as I said before, Dr. Rufus Weller is voiced by none other than David Tennant. And yes, you can really see the similarity. Miranda Worth, Julian's, uh, uh, well, girlfriend, is voiced by none other than Dakota Fanning. The girl I always said would be the next Judy Foster because she has such a deep voice that you sometimes cannot even hear that it is a female. 
and kind of surprising really given you know, for, you know the fact that so many people grew up watching her as a kid <laughs> and then we have many others but that's a story for the next episode so what are my first thoughts on it well I was very interested in seeing it it also it really landed well with the fact that it started with the the team the team well Miranda meeting Julian's family and I have to say that was a nice step it was nice comedy moments you know of a uh, family embarrassing their child like that situation and then immediately switched to a little bit more darker with fighting where many soldiers died really effed up the action of it all Although the flying animation and what happened there, I can admit I didn't really draw to that, so I skipped a little, that a little bit. But then we came to four years later, we could really feel the tension of the emotion. And then with Julian apparently being alive, well, we'll see how that be. But the characters here does seem interesting, and Rooster Chief has always created interesting characters, so that is good. Including some side characters that are interesting. Miguel... Garza, a guy from southern Texas, although technically it looks very Latino, voice by none other than, than Miles Luna. And uh, uh, and also the colonel, Racket Marin, is voiced by none other than Monica Real, you know, one of the more popular Funimation actors out there. So uh, those were the, mostly those actors we saw. We did say, see another one called Jari Brennan, voiced by Shad James, who was apparently a little bit more of a hopeless, uh, what is that word, romantic. It's clear that he wants to get inside of Miranda, but you know, I don't think he's ever going get to that, get that lucky. And then uh, Leon August, who's voiced by Greg Haddock, the same man who created this show. Greg Haddock was famous in for many things working for Rooster Teeth. But if anyone want, just want to remember his voice, I think that I think he was the man who voiced uh, the famous, uh, well, you know, sorry, sorry, I, sorry, I stammer sometimes. I'm trying to say uh, Roman Tortrick from Ruby. I think at least it is him. Could be wrong, but hey, it is what it is. And um, but the main antagonist of this is Union, some kind of strange uh, uh, nano machines that de that pulverize the Statue of Liberty as soon as they s saw each other. But what they are, no idea. What they want, no idea. So I will look forward to seeing this more because the characters really seem to drive it forward. And why is Chase alive? Well, we'll see that in the second episode. Give me your thoughts if you have any.